Hi, I am Dr. Vaseem Sheikh. In this video, we will see different types of fracture in material. What is fracture? So fracture is nothing but separation of a material or a body into two or more than two pieces when we apply some stress on the material that too at a temperature which is lower than the absolute melting temperature. Because when the temperatures are higher, different types of other factors are also affecting the material and it may fail because of several reasons. So fracture can also occur because of fatigue that is repetitive loading or because of creep that is failure of the material at elevated temperature which is dependent on time. And of course we will be covering these topics in the upcoming lectures. So we know that the loads can be applied in different form like tensile loading is there, compressive loading is there, torsional loading is there. But for the sake of this lecture or this video, we will only deal with uniaxial tensile stress or load. What are the different types of fracture? So there are basically two types of fracture, ductile fracture and brittle fracture. Ductile fracture is accompanied by a lot of high plastic deformation and in brittle fracture there is little or no plastic deformation and the material fails catastrophically. So let us compare ductile and brittle fracture. So here in this image if you see the material which is failing because it is very much ductile is accompanied by a huge plastic deformation. The deformation is very large that means the area of reduction and the change in length is significantly higher. Then we move on to the moderately ductile failure of the material. Here the deformation is little less and then we move on to the brittle fracture. There you see it does not have any deformation. The material is basically flat at the area of fracture and that means the material is not giving any intimation of failure and it is not desirable because we don't want the material to fail suddenly. We want to know the material that it is failing. So you want to know, we want to get an intimation. So brittle material does not give that intimation. But on the other hand, ductile material, when we see the ductile material, it goes through necking, it goes through the change in form, the change in shape, and we can easily identify the material will fail now. And it is highly desirable because we know the material is going to fail and we can replace that part or material and so on. Let us look at an example of ductile failure and specifically we are looking at a pipe which has failed because of ductile failure. Here as we see the material which has failed it has a very large deformation and basically it is one piece. On the other hand when we see a brittle fracture it will have very small small deformation and the material will break into many pieces. Let us look into the moderately ductile failure of a material or we can say that evolution of failure of a material when it is going through a uniaxial tensile loading. In the first image which we see the material is loaded in tension in the first image and you can see that there is a small necking which is happening in the material. As we increase the load the small small voids will nucleate and as we keep on increasing the load these small small voids will basically come together and they will join together and they will link together. As we keep on increasing that load, there will be shearing at that surface and the material will fail after we increase the load. So when we look into the micrographs of the failed surface, we see at the surface that there is small small particles which are there. So these particles serve as a void nucleation site. So just besides these particles, you will see that voids will nucleate during the void nucleation process and these voids will multiply as you go on increasing the load and a typical moderately ductile failure appears as a cup and cone failure so you can see a cup and cone formation so here it is you can look at this image and you can see when the ductile material fails it accompanies with lot of deformation and change in size change in length also it appears as a cup and cone failure this is an example of the brittle fracture. Here there is no cup and cone failure, no deformation. The material catastrophically fails without giving any previous intimation as if you have sheared the material into two halves. Let us see what happens during brittle fracture. What happens to the internal surface during brittle fracture? 
so when the load is applied the crack will propagate and it will break the bonds it will break the atomic bonds and it will propagate through some specific crystallographic planes and orientation this is called as cleavage so there are two types of brittle fracture which can occur the first is transgranular that means the crack will propagate throughout the grain like through the grain it will pass through the grain this is called as transgranular fracture and it will pass through the grain this is an image which shows a transgranular fracture where you can see the surface it is not defined in terms of the grain so the next image which we will see of the other type of fracture there you can easily see the image and the shape of the grains so by that way we can identify whether the material has failed because of transgranular fracture or intergranular fracture so here the grains are not defined properly the shape of the grains are not visible properly that means the crack is propagated through the grain and it is a transgranular fracture the next is intergranular fracture that means the crack has propagated through the grain boundaries of the material and then it has failed so this is again a type of fracture that happens in brittle material this is an actual image of a intergranular fracture here you can see the image of the grains and the grains are very defined and very sharp and you can easily identify the grains that means the crack has propagated properly to the grain boundaries and this is how you identify what type of fracture the material has undergone and we can identify how to prevent such type of fracture and what has happened so that the material has failed because of such type of fracture such type of nature of fracture so when you see an intergranular fracture what has happened is the grain boundary has weakened the grain boundary of the material has weakened and this can happen because of grain boundary embrittlement that means the grain boundaries they have become brittle and somehow they are weak and then because of that the material has gone through the brittle fracture and that brittle fracture is nothing but it is a intergranular brittle fracture let us summarize what we have seen in this video today we have seen what is fracture so fracture is nothing but separation or breakage of the material into two or more part when we apply the load that load is lower than the melting temperature of the material and there are two types of fracture ductile fracture and brittle fracture ductile fracture is accompanied by lot of deformation lot of plastic deformation and you can visibly see the material is deforming and it is about to break brittle fracture the material fails catastrophically you can't get an intimation you can't know whether the material is failing or not suddenly the material breaks and it fails and there are two types of brittle fracture intergranular and transgranular fracture so thanks for watching the video all the best